Okay, so last time we looked at um, deriving the strain as uh, the gradient of the displacement fields. So again, this is a mathematical description. If you're given mathematically the displacement, you can exactly compute the strain at a point given the following definitions. So let's do a simple example. Okay, so let's just consider a planar case. Let's do an example. Let's say you're given uh, the following deformation. Let's say that u is a function of x and y, and that's 0 0.1 plus 0 0.01 in the x direction, and then the displacement in the y direction is going to be um, minus 0 0.3 in the x direction plus 0 0.2 in the y direction plus um, 0 0.01 y squared. Okay? So let's forget about for now what the what this looks like, but this is uh, actually stretching the x and the y with a little bit of shear. I mean, you'll see why the shear is there because we have this cross product term. Anytime you have a displacement in the x direction that's a function of y, or in this case, the displacement in the y direction that's a function of x, it's going to give you a little bit of shear. But but that's it's not really the main point. But let's compute the stresses in the plane. So let's compute the normal stresses and the XY sh engineering shear stress strain, excuse me. So the normal strain in the X direction is the partial of U with respect to X, and so that's just simply 0 0.01. So it's a constant, okay? Not a function of position. Likewise, we can compute the normal strain in the Y direction. That's the partial of V with respect to Y. And if we do that, that gives me 0.2 plus uh, 0.02 times y, right? The derivative of the second term, right? So in this case, you can see that the strain, the normal strain in the y direction is a function of position. It's a linear function of y, okay? So it's not constant, all right? And then we can get the uh, in-plane shear strain, right? And so this is going to be uh, the partial of u with respect to y plus the partial of v with respect to x. So the partial of u with respect to y is 0, and the partial of v with respect to x is minus 0.3, and that's what you get. So the shear has a minus 0 0.3. Again, constant, okay? So sometimes people like to write this in a matrix or, or in void form. In a matrix form, it would be something like this. But for finite elements, more conveniently, we write this in void form, right as a column vector, epsilon x, epsilon y, and then the in-plane value. So this is just going to be uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.2 plus 0.02 times y, that's a y, and then finally minus 0.3. Okay? So if you wanted to get it at an exact point, you would get it by plugging the values for x and y into this value. So this one's not a function of x, it's only a function of y, but if it could it could very well be a function of x as well. Alright? Alright, let me just do one other quick example just to give you an illustration of the different types of dilatation. So let's consider a, um, a bar that's simply stretching. Okay, so we know the way this works out. Uh, the displacement here is actually a linear function of x. So it's only deforming in the x direction, and it's really just a function of x. So it's going to be something like c naught plus c one times x. All right. So if we look at the strain in the x direction, it's the only one of interest, right? You can see this just becomes C1. So that linear coefficient is the strain, okay? 
Likewise, um, you could look at a simple um, shear, shearing uh, deformation. Let's say, uh, let's consider the following. Let's look at something that, that deforms as follows. So let's see, it starts like this, and then it just deforms like this. Okay? So if you look at this deformation, it's only deforming in the x direction. But um, the amount that it deforms in the x direction is a function of the y position. It's a linear function of the y position. So this is just going to be, you know, uh, b1 y. All right? So it's such that if you go up a distance, a unit distance 1 here, right, the amount that this is going to tick over is that b1. Okay? So here, if you look at the normal strain in the x direction, well, that's obviously 0. Likewise, the normal strain in the y direction is also 0. And you can get that just, you know, it's obvious by looking at the deformation pattern. Uh, but here, the engineering strain is going to be partial of u with respect to y plus the partial of v with respect to x. The partial of u with respect to y is simply b1, and then the partial of v with respect to x is 0. So this just gives us that the shear strain is, again, that term. So this is what I was saying before when I say that shear strain is when you usually have a a displacement in one direction, which is a function of position in the other. Okay, those cross terms. Okay.